Hello and welcome. It is time once again to try to fix something at the day on the workbench. I have another broken PS5 power supply. Uh, ADP 400 FR. I bought this broken off of eBay. I pick these up when I can because they're they're kind of hard to come by. You know, um, uh, for whatever reason, I guess because it's the latest model and used in the latest model of the PS5. There's not a lot of them yet on the market. Um, and you know, working pulls are like 120 bucks. So anyway, I don't remember how much I paid for this. I bought it like a month ago, but uh, just not getting a chance to get into it. And I was getting ready to open it up, and I notice some scratches around the edge. Somebody's already been in here. I found, yeah, several marks around there. So somebody's been inside, and I'm not quite sure what they've done, but um, I guess we're going to find out. So let me get into this thing. Uh, I'll get it opened up and struggle with it for a few minutes, and I'll bring you back when I get it in pieces. That didn't take too long. I could I could definitely tell this thing had been opened before it uh, the case popped open relatively easily. Um, I have not tried to even turn this thing on. I'm assuming the seller was being honest and saying it does not work. But hmm, it looks like looks like one of these capacitors has been changed. They don't quite match. This one's still glued down. But this one is floating in the breeze there. So if somebody changed out a capacitor, let's just make sure there's no charge on these capacitors. These leads have been rolled up for a while. Nothing. Nothing. So, yeah, she's pretty dead. Good. Let's see if we can figure out what all they've done to it. Uh, yeah, you can see uh, where they soldered that capacitor in there. But I don't see a load of flux anywhere. Don't really see any signs of any other. Well, I no. thought I saw a damaged uh, transistor. But no, it's just the just the lighting over here. It's fine. Thought I saw a crack in it. Okay. I guess it's time to be doing a few basic checks. And let me introduce to you my latest tool. Yes, I bought another meter. Um, I, I have a collection of meters. I don't know why if I buy them, but I was wanting one of these OLED uh, Agilent meters for a while. And of course, they're rather expensive. I was able to pick one up on eBay, though non-working, because you know the, the screens are common to fail in them, and this one had a failed screen. But uh, your replacement screens are available aftermarket. You know, not really originals, but uh, so I picked this up and I put a new screen in it. And this came from uh, the seller is someone you might have heard heard from before, none other than Mr. Ben Heckendorn or Ben Heck, as he's known on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, he was the owner of this one. And I even got him to sign it for me, if you can see it there. I'm not sure how well that shows up. And he wrote Heck on it. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of neat. Mr. Ben Heck. So, but she is uh, fully, function fully functional now. And we're going to use it to try to do some troubleshooting, maybe. Not sure about that refresh, refresh flicker. Have to deal with that. Let's go to continuity mode. Mm -hmm. See what we can find. Ah, oh, that's resistance. Continuity. Alrighty. 
let's start with some basics here. Fuse. Of course, the fuse is good. Um, that capacitor. I want to make sure if there's a short across that capacitor. There is not. Um, there's a fusible resistor right here. Is it open? Yes, it is open. So, yeah, that'll keep it from working. And if that fuse is open, then we had to have uh, had a MOSFET blown. And, yeah, this one right here looks very strange under that middle leg. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's just dirt or not. Not sure how well that shows up, but uh, yeah, right in there. Looks a little discolored or something. So, do we have a short here? I had the exact same resistance twice there. So, is this shorted here? Yes, so we are shorted right there. What about the other one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid both our MOSFETs are probably gone here. Yeah, that one has definitely been been hot and discolored right there. But, I yeah, it doesn't look like they've been replaced. So somebody replaced the capacitor, which needs to be glued back down. I'll put some hot glue on that. Is that our only issue? Or did we pop our DAP53? Maybe we'll do a quick check there. In diode mode. Let me find my notes. It has been a while since I've worked on one of these power supplies. This should be close. This is from an ADP 400DR. Didn't I make some 400FR notes? I think that's something I would probably do, yeah. Although I didn't title it. But I've got uh, some notes here for the DMP14, which is right there. So yeah, this should be it. This should be for the 400FR. Let's see if I can move things a little. Just some notes. We are in diode mode. Where's that common ground? Right there. Now, can I do this without the microscope? This pin one. And that looks all right. Two. Three. Now, these probes that came with this meter are not the sharpest. So I may have to swap those out. Because the stuff I work on is usually pretty small. One, two, three, four. Um, hmm. If I spin four, it should not be shorted to ground. Two, three, four. Uh, I'm showing, hmm, I think this is wrong. These are my notes for the DNP14 chip on here. These are the diode readings for the DNP14. I don't think I made any separate ones. Yeah, pin 4 is ground on the DAP53. That makes more sense. That makes a lot more sense. I think I just found that the, um, the diode readings on the DAP53 are pretty much the same between the different revisions. So I didn't make any separate notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is a no connect. Eight, one point that looks fine. Nine, ten, nine, ten, eleven is uh 11 should not be grounded. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Should not be grounded. Um, of course, we still have shorted MOSFETs. Maybe that's the issue there. 12 is no connect. 13, 14, 15, 16. Looks pretty good except for 11. But I'm going to have to figure out what 11 is connected to if I... Because uh, I cannot remember. Let's get these MOSFETs out and see if uh, if that clears that short. But we may have a, a bad DAP53 also. There they are. And that resistor's got to come out also, that fusible resistor. Let me turn this around, get a little closer to me. Take our resistor out. MOSFETs. This is the one that, yeah, there's been a little bit of uh, flames come out the bottom of that MOSFET, if you can see it. But they had not been changed. And let's see, these are, let me look at them over here. Yeah, 18 N60 M2, which I don't think are very obtainable. I found something else that works for me. Oh wow, I guess I bought a few of these, didn't I? Uh, that's what I've been using. And they work well. And two volunteers have fallen out. Okay. Let me check. I'll check those. I'm pretty sure. Well, let me look at them. I'm pretty sure these are both shorted. If one goes, it you know tends to take the other one out too. Let's just see. Those are the new ones. Let's hope they're good. I'm in diode mode. Yeah, short. Yeah. Look, like the gate connection is still good, which, you know, gives me some hope that our uh, our uh, DAP53 survived if, if voltage didn't go back through the gate. Uh, it's the drain source that has shorted. Okay. So, a uh, good old drain source short. See if I can get those, uh, get that resistor out of there. Don't think I quite got it desoldered. Some rather tough leads on there. smoke or something that blew out the bottom of those transistors there on the board.
I do find it a little strange that they don't uh, heat sink these. But they don't. I mean, it's not going to help in the case of a short, but it's not like it would help in the overall, you know, lifespan of them. Because heat kills electronics. resistors. There we are. 0.1 ohm, 2 watt, fusible resistor. That's what I'm using. trim these transistors off just a little where did that go I cut that lead off and it went somewhere there it goes definitely don't want those floating around nothing good can come from that sure that capacitor is in there the right way it looks like it is I guess somebody was just m taking a total guess in replacing that capacitor didn't quite get those as straight as I would like but oh well clean it up somewhere somebody replaced that capacitor I guess okay uh, what, what pin was it we had the short on 11 11 Do we still have a short on 11? Because now I've changed my orientation. Do it this way. Uh, red probe on ground. 9, 10, 11. Nope, short's gone. 12, 12. So 12 is no connection. 13, 14, 15, 16. So, 
Our short is gone. Did our chip survive? 9, 10, 11. I'm thinking it did. I'm thinking it did. Shall we find out? Get off from under there. I don't have a load on it yet. If she comes up, we will check it on the load. Uh, I'm going to turn the voltage down on my Variac. I'm going to bring it up kind of slow. Like 60 volts. Yep, she's trying to start. Here we go. 12 volts. Let me get up to... There's 120. Looks good. Uh, let's get it set up on load. Make sure it'll work on a load. Turn that off. Also, I need to check the uh, the boost voltage for the power factor corrector. Let's do that while we're here. Just to make sure it's it's boosting like it should. Yeah, we got 12 volts. If we get down in here, 380. That seems a little low. Three hundred and eighty-four volts. That seems a little bit low. We have to take a look at take a look at this under the microscope. I'd like to see about 395 there. I mean, she's working, but you know the true test may be what happens when we put a, a, an actual load on it. You know, will it will it fall down? So let's do that. Get my load fired up. And get some stuff out of the way. Set the current for, uh, I don't know, at least like three amps or something. On. Uh, let me move the camera where you can see what I'm doing. All right, I have my load set up. I'm set on um, three amps, constant current, and it is on. So let's just see what we get. I'm connected right there. Do it get when I turn the AC on. Well, she looks normal. She's handling three amps, no problem. Let's bring that up. Seven amps. That looks good. Although let me let me put you back in the holder here. Let's see what that boost voltage is doing. Okay, we're still running with a, a seven amp load. Just want to see what this voltage is doing. Has it dropped way down? What has it done? Oh, she went up. Okay. 
395. I like that. So apparently it needs some kind of a load on it to, to regulate that properly. That looks beautiful. That will work. Okay, just need to put this thing back together. And well, I need to glue this down, don't I? I don't like that flopping around like that. Let me get a little hot glue on that. Alright, well our capacitor is secured down with hot glue, our supply is fully reassembled, I have hot glue all over my workbench, as one always does, and let's try this thing that's reassembled um, on the load, make sure she turns on, and she does, and that's, that's at 7 amp of current again, alright, I think this, I'm going to let this thing run for a while, and um, I may have to point my fan at it over there just to kind of help keep it cool, but give it a little bit of a burn in, but I think she's fine now. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one. I thought it was somewhat interesting or educational. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, and I will be bringing you more repairs very soon. So I thank you for coming along with me. So long.